patuloy na nagbibigay serbisyo. Pagasa at saya. GMA Regional TV. Kapuso ng bawat Pilipino. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. Good afternoon. This is your GMA Regional TV Weekend News. The biggest, the latest, as local news matters. Kathleen Revilla. Adrian Prietos. Zen Kinantang broadcasting live from GMA Complex in Iloilo. This afternoon, we will be joined by our Jimmy Regional TV correspondents, Daryl Marie Sarmiento of One Western Visayas, Rial Soroche of One Mindanao, and Rain Palino from RTV Bicol. Hey, Zen, apart from news and information, I am equally excited with the kind of stories we have. Inspiring and, of course, food and features, festivals. What a great show. Yes, that is right, Adrian, and we also have other counterparts from the other regions. Joining us this afternoon, Joanne Ponsoy from Balitang Amyanan and Shona Karyon from Balitang Bisdak. For today's headlines. Two of the three Chong convicts surrendered today. Three heinous crime convicts released through GCTA voluntarily surrenders to Cebu police. Illegal structures in Iloilo Terminal Market allegedly used as sex den. Police looking into links of the investment scams in the series of killings in Davao. Canine virus kills more than 100 dogs in the Gupan. Police checking for vital information in the belongings of slain drug ring bagman in Negros. Mining and treasure hunting at 100 Islands National Park discovered. And explore the seafood capital of the Philippines. Two of the three convicts in the Chong 7 kidnap rape slay who were released by virtue of the good conduct time allowance surrendered today. For the details, we have Chona Karyon live from Cebu City. Chona? Yes, Adrian, Mrs. Thelma Chong was elated after finding out that two of the three of the seven accused convicted in the rape slay of her daughters surrendered. In a phone interview, Mrs. Chong said she earlier learned that Ariel Balansag and Alberto Cano sent fillers of their intent to surrender. This is following the call of President Rodrigo Duterte last Wednesday night directing all released convicts to report back to the Bureau of Corrections. The mother of Mary Joy and Jacqueline Chong thanked Balansag and Cano for heeding the President's call. Cano, Balansag, nalipay ko na kusang kusa agad ka mo ni surrender na uh, sa balaod kaya illegal lang din yung paggawa so salamat kay ni surrender mo her joy she said is not complete because Josman Asnar the third convict released from the new believed prison is still at large surrender na Josman kay ang di mo yung kaang ay nasgawas madak madak pa ng diapung ka ako pa niyo mo surrender na lang ka bago ka issue to kill 
The Chong couple earlier sought the assistance of CIDG-7 to re-arrest the three convicts who hail from Cebu. CIDG was the agency instrumental in the arrest of the Chong-7. The Chong say that the release of the three has rekindled the pain their family went through when they lost their daughters Jacqueline and Mary Joy in 1997. The Chongs were also happy with the president's order removing Nicanor Faildon as chief of the Bureau of Corrections. She has been very vocal in calling for Faildon's removal from office. Adrian, Mrs. Chong is still hoping that Jusman Asnar will follow President Duterte's directive because she said the crime committed against her two daughters are too heinous to be pardoned. Adrian? Live from Cebu City, thank you, Chona. Yesterday, two more released convicts from the National Belibid Prison due to the good conduct time allowance voluntarily surrendered to authorities. Alan Domingo for the details. The Criminal Investigation and Detection Group 7 has in its custody two heinous crime convicts. Conrado Cortez, who was convicted of robbery with homicide, was released from the new Belibid prison last June of under Republic Act 10592 or the Good Conduct Time Allowance Law. He felt sad for his short lived freedom. Gusto lang ming ma limpio ang among paglaya. Dili ingon nga mahimo na pon ming wanted ni surrender lang yun mi kay aron maayo ang among pag panginaboy ni kagawas na namo ba. Like Cortez, Danilo de la Victoria attempted twice to surrender before the CIDG-7. De la Victoria was convicted of parricide and was sentenced to life imprisonment. Yung sinasabi ni Pangulo ngayon, 15 days lang po ang binigay sa atin. Pag lumampas ng 15 days, siyo to kill. Ang patong po sa atin ay isang milyon. Jesus Negro Jr. who surrendered to the Bugus City, Cebu Police Station, Shortly after the president issued the announcement, said, as a former soldier, he saw it proper to heed the Duterte's directive. In the good bit ago, kasi nagbago na nga ako eh. Eh, kung hindi ako susuko, wala kong pinagkaya, but parang hindi ako nagbago. In response to the president's order, the CIDG-7 has created a tracker team for convicts released the GCTA. They will be undergoing booking procedure, normal process. Kaka na ma, once ma-arresto ang mga uh, suspected criminal, they will be undergoing uh, booking procedure. Eh, Mag-shot na ito na sila. Together with cameraman Godfrey Rillian, I am Alan Domingo for GMA Regional TV. The Iloilo City Government has ordered the demolition of illegal structures at the Iloilo Terminal Market, which is allegedly being used as sex den. John Sala tells more in this report. Iloilo City Mayor Jerry Trenias orders clearing of all illegal structures inside and outside the Iloilo Terminal Market, including improvised second-floor stalls that are allegedly being used as sex dens by minors. This after the Iloilo City Task Force on Moral and Values Formation received reports after rescuing minors who are allegedly engaging in sexual activities in the area. Ang ilan ng abugaw nga agi, upod doon ng mga kabataan, uh, tatlo, apat, lima, da, sila nagatansak. Sa ilang mga kliente, sa ilang mga parokyano. But market vendors deny the allegations. Wala kami kabalo, duway na kami, pero wala mangit kami. May nabalaan nga ginaymo, nagyumna nila na si Babaw nga ginaymoan nila sa kung ano. Why kami sinaya kabalo, sir? May why mga disamon nga katabo, sir? The market in charge admits that there are a lot of miners loitering in and around the market even after the 10 p.m. curfew, but denies the operation of a sex den. Kaya sa Lindres, nagalabay mo na doon ang mga kabataan mo. Ginasaway mo na sa Santa Giaga, palagyo naman sa kundi naman na sila mga kanto naman yung stalls. Authorities are now on the lookout for the alleged pimp escorting the minors. Iloilo City Police Office will augment deployment in the area to monitor and to make sure that the market is free from illegal activities. Together with kami naman si Rilo Renduque, John Sala for GMA Regional TV. In Pangasinan, a bangus grower dies of leptospirosis. Full details from Jasmine Galvan. A 57-year-old bangus grower, Max Dakurong, from Sichutokok, Barangay, Lukaw, Dagupan City, suffered severe headaches for two days. 
On the third day, the Kurong was vomiting continuously, which promoted his family to immediately rush him to the hospital. The doctor's diagnosis is leptospirosis. The family believes that the victim acquired the disease because their house has been flooded in recent weeks due to high tide. The Kurong's children say that their father never used any protective gear like boots when wading in floodwaters. Mahirap, masakit. Kasi bata pa si no, father ko. According to the Pangasinan Provincial Health Office, leptospirosis cases decreased by 40% in 2019 compared to previous year. 295 cases were recorded from January 1 up to September 3, 2018, while only 77 cases were recorded on the same period this year. Nagbibigay po kami ng mga prophylaxis. Ito po nga yung doxycycline na ibinibigay po natin sa mga munisipyo or sa mga rural health centers po. Leptospirosis is an infectious disease that can occur in humans and animals. Symptoms include high fever, headache, chilling, muscle aches, vomiting, abdominal pain, and jaundice or yellow skin and eyes. The incubation time between a person's exposure to a contaminated source is between two days to four weeks. Illness usually begins abruptly with the fever. In Western Visayas, the number of cases of leptospirosis in Region 6 has dropped 55% in 2019. 158 cases were recorded from January 1 to August 24, 2019. Less than the 351 cases recorded from the same period last year. Negros Occidental has the highest number of cases at 57 with six deaths. I am Jasmine Gabriel Galban for GMA Regional TV. Two shooting incidents took place this week in Tagum City, Davao del Norte. Both cases involve investment scam related issues. Rial Sorache has the details live. Rial? Yes, Zen of the four victims, two died on the spot while the others are still in the hospital for medical treatment. 22-year-old Judy Lupalas was declared dead on arrival at the hospital while her younger sister is still being treated after sustaining gunshot wounds. Police investigation shows that the victims were resting inside the house of their aunt in Barangay New Visayan Village, Tagum City when an identified man forcibly entered the house and shot the victims for no apparent reason. At the crime scene, investigators recovered three fired cartridge cases and one fired bullet of caliber 45 pistol. The victims had not received any threats, but their mother, who was a cashier and also an agent of PLC investment firm, has been missing after the said company shut down in July. Immediate family members have no idea of the current location of the mother. Prior aning uh, incident, uh, na ay mga tao daw na, na, na nagapangita kang Marilu. Family members and friends are calling for justice for the victims. In a separate incident, a lone unidentified gunman barged inside the house of 44-year-old Gilbert Payan, shooting him several times, killing him on the spot. A bullet grazed the arm of the victim's wife, Annalisa, while the couple was having dinner at their home in Barangay Apokon. Police investigation revealed that the victim was a coordinator of an investment firm called Gambaro, which was also closed down following the investment scam controversy in Davao region. The police is also looking at personal grudge as another possible motive of the crime. Tinitinan pa natin ang angulo doon kung involved ba talaga to sa, sa mga investment scam dito sa Tagum City. As of now, police still conducting intensified intel monitoring regarding the shooting incidents in Tagum City. Zen? Thanks, Rial Soroche from Juan Mindanao. Police continue to investigate bank books and alleged lists of other drug personalities in Negros Occidental found inside a car of self-confessed drug group bagman turned whistleblower Ricky Sereño, who was shot dead by riding in tandem suspects in Bacolod City. More on this report. 
Police are looking into the bank books and list of transactions. Recovered from the slain bagman turned whistleblower Ricky Sereno was shot dead last August 31. Authorities are hoping to get a lead from the belongings of Sereno, but his family is objecting, saying that the items being subjected to police scrutiny have nothing to do with drug deals. Ginpautang na namun ang kwarta namun, ruling ruling namun, makapian pian sa mga kabataan namun. Hindi sila magambalya ng drugs to. Five days after Sereno was shot by motorcycle riding assailants, a certain Mary Rose Santillan was subjected to a bypass operation. It turned out that Santillan's name was among those found in the belongings of Sereno. According to police investigation, Santillan was allegedly included in the list of Sereno. Ina ng mga na-recover ara na sa posisyon sa aton nga IOC investigator on case kag ina hindi na pidi mapabalik sa pamilya. Tanan nga na-recover sa crime scene, automatic na serve as evidence. 600,000 pesos worth of suspected shabu was retrieved from Santillian's possession. Yesterday, another drug personality allegedly included in Sirenia's list was killed in a drug by bus operation in Visa Alegre in Bacolod City. Billy Bantayan and Elias Jojo, 34, allegedly fought back the police operatives. Bantayan's name figured in various drugs lists in the city. Wala lang ko kakuan kong kilala. Anaygid sila, pero na-identify ni siya, na-connectado siya sa kay Ricky Sirenio sa transaksyon sa ilegal na droga. Together with cameraman Raydel Castillo, Adrian Prietos for Jimmy Regional TV. This year's Tuna Festival featured the icons of General Santos City, the fighting Senator Manny Pacquiao and its finest tuna. Capuzo artists also joined the celebration. Teco Campo has the details. Colorful floats from different contingents flooded the streets of General Santos City during the opening of the week-long tuna festival. Various sea creatures like Jensen's finest tuna were brought to life which delighted spectators who witnessed the Grand Float Parade. Fictional sea creatures like mermaids, colorful sea corals, superheroes, local personalities were also featured including the image of fighting Senator Manny Pacman Pacquiao. The exciting night ended in a colorful display of fireworks which amazed the crowd. The Tuna Festival also gathered hundreds of Zumba enthusiasts from different parts of Sok Sargen in a dance fitness showdown to promote endurance, a healthy lifestyle, and bonding among the participants. Meanwhile, the Pick Tuna Photo Walk Photography Competition was also held at the Jensen Fishport. Capuso stars Ken Chan and Rita Daniela, the lead stars of the upcoming GMA Telebabad series, One of the Bays, brought the house down during the Capuso Mall Show. Capuso fans were also serenaded by another cast member of one of the base, Edgar Alan Guzman. Capuso generals showed their unwavering support to the Capuso artists and to the GMA programs as well. I'm Teco Campo for GMA Regional TV. The demolition of stalls along Milo Street in Manawag, Pangasinan is just part of town's clearing operation for pedestrian pathways. According to authorities, vendors were given ample time to dismantle their stalls. Joan Ponsoy has the details live. Joan? Kate, the demolition of stalls along Milo Street in Manawag, Pangasinan is just part of the town's clearing operation for pedestrian pathways. According to authorities, vendors were given ample time to dismantle their stalls. Demolition team from Department of Public Works and Highways, 51st Engineer Brigade Philippine Army, Engineering Office and Market Division of Municipality of Manawag cracked down on stalls along Milo Street near the Minor Basilica of Manawag. Yun po yung directive ng ating presidente. Uh, kasama po yung ano, uh, may ginawang directive ang ating secretary. Secretary Agno na to clear all uh, obstruction. There are 137 stalls in the area where souvenirs, religious items, and handicraft items are being sold as well as several eateries. Baka yung padir ng simba, madamay. Kaya yan, ma maging mano-mano yan. Demolition team's operation was difficult because most of the stalls are concrete structures. All the debris and even roofing materials were recovered by the authorities. 
for safekeeping natin yan, ma'am. Then, uh, pa-inspect natin sa COA. Tapos, uh, COA proceedings ang gagamitin natin para sa disposal. New stalls were constructed for affected vendors, located few meters away from the Basilica. Aling Saming is one first vendors who moved to the relocation site. Para naman po, siyempre, kailangan din namin ng pang-araw-araw, kaya mag-uumpisa na po. In Iloilo City, 1,500 sidewalk vendors are being given seven days to vacate their stalls as part of the city's road clearing operations. Affected vendors will be given 15,000 pesos each, as well as livelihood and skills training. The city government is currently looking for an alternative area for the displaced vendors. Houses and establishments considered as road obstructions were also demolished in Oton, Iloilo. A spot inspection was also conducted in the town of Liganes to make sure that the mandate is being followed. According to Iloilo Provincial DILG, 70% of national roads in Iloilo have already cleared from road obstructions. The clearing operation will temporarily cease on uh, Sunday, September 8 to give way for the Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary where thousands of devotees are expected to arrive in Minor Basilica. Kate? Thank you, Joanne Consoy from Balitang Amyanan. A police officer from Ming Lanilla Cebu was shot dead. His two assailants were killed in separate police operations. Chona Carion has the details. Police Staff Sergeant Alfredo Pagaling was patrolling the highway of Ming Lanilla Cebu with Police Corporal Alan Villasorda on August 31st. CCTV footage showed two men on a motorcycle firing two shots at the patrol car before speeding off. Pagali, who was the team leader of the Minglanilla Police Patrol Section, was hit on the head. I think it's a blocking portion. If you can see, it's just a split minute. So it's not yet coming to the information that there's a shooting incident in Talisay. And then they're going to be able to carry the mobile there at the standby point. They're going to be able to carry the mobile there at the standby point. They're going to be able to carry the mobile there at the standby point. They're going to be able to carry the mobile there for the purpose that they're not able to carry the mobile. The 50-year-old police officer was planning to avail of the early retirement to spend quality time with his wife and seven kids. Ako may mutabang sa kong inahan. Kay mommy ngon tabang-tabangin na yun ha. na sa gipamati. Kay labla ba na ako yung mama. Pag ang pinja sa kaan ba? Pag nalakas sa nangit. Anya, unta maamo lang sa iba. Matagagusti siya ang amamahan ba? Based on a witness account, police identified Jesse Harold Manugas and Jessner Fernandez to be behind the shooting. Separate police operations were then conducted. Manugas was later killed in a shootout with police on Monday in the town of San Fernando, Cebu, after allegedly resisting arrest. The second suspect, Fernandez, was also shot dead in Carcar, Cebu, on the same day. Like Manugas, he too allegedly resisted the arrest. Both Manugas and Fernandez were frat brothers. Together with cameraman Rinanti Quinones, I am Chana Carion for GMA Regional TV. At least eight people were injured in an explosion in Isulan Sultan Kudarat early this morning. The injured were immediately brought to the hospital. Among the victims are two traffic enforcers of the town. According to authorities, based on CCTV footage, the suspected improvised explosive device was placed in a parking area for motorcycles in front of the public market. The IED was believed to have been left by the suspects the night before or early this morning. Last year, two bombings hit the town that left five persons dead. The police is exerting efforts to apprehend those behind the blast. A construction worker in Barangay Trapiche, Oton, Iloilo, was hacked to death by his brother. The victim, 40-year-old Lino De Leon, was on his way home when he was hacked by his 56-year-old brother, Apulinario, who was allegedly suffering from nervous breakdown. Police are also looking into old grudge as motive of the crime. In Davao City, a four-year-old girl was found floating dead in a fish pond in Barangay Tapak, Pakibato District. 
The victim, baby in Reen Man Ologan, is also believed to have been raped before she was killed as the girl's genital was lacerated. In Talisay City, 26-year-old R.G. Santillan died from a gunshot wound in a rumble against his neighbors. The suspects, brothers Roger and Christopher Jimenez, accused the victim of stealing a fighting cock from their breeding farm. The two suspects fled the scene, leaving another suspect, Roger's 17-year-old son, who is now under DSWD custody. A Norwegian national was held for questioning by police after he was found inside a hotel room in Davao City with two Filipino boys aged 8 and 10 years old. The foreigner claimed that he is in a relationship with the mother of one of the minors. The boys are now under the custody of the city's social services and development office pending the appearance of their parents. Farmers appeal for help as palay price drops to 7 to 10 pesos per kilo. Daryl Marie Sarmiento will give us more details live. Daryl? Adrian, it's the start of harvest season, but the struggle continues for farmers as they suffer from income loss due to low price of palay. A group of local farmers from Barotac Nuevo, Iloilo, travels all the way to the town of Santa Barbara, 25 kilometers away, to help in harvesting palay. But as the price of palay drops 7 to 10 pesos per kilo, farmers fear that it cannot compensate their expenses. They say the price of rice in the market is three times higher than the price of palay. Ang presyo ka humaisubong, barato, ang bugas amo ang mahal. Ti hindi kami ka kwan sa mga kabataan namo na ikadamo. They believe that uncontrolled rice importation is killing local farmers' livelihood. The president has already ordered the National Food Authority to buy palay from local markets. According to NFA Region 6, they have 17 buying stations all over the region that are ready to cater to farmers. So mataas-taas kita. Kagsubong ready kita sa pam pamakal. Actually, wala iya kaunta at makal ang NFA. Open it kami sina iya. The Iloilo local government is also looking into entering into 100 million peso loan agreement with the Land Bank of the Philippines. This fund will be used to buy palay at a premium price from farmers tilling one hectare of land and below. This money will be coursed through the provincial livelihood uh, fund made available to cooperatives with uh, rice processing complexes. The bank will also offer a 15,000 peso loan for 1,296 farmers on a first-come, first-served basis. In Lawak, Pangasinan, farmers are heavily investing in pesticides to quell the rice bug infestation in Barangay Di Alarcho and Kabilawan. Yet rice crops were severely damaged, leaving farmers no choice but to conduct a forest harvest. Local authorities estimate that 20 hectares of rice fields were infested by rice bugs. Adrian, the provincial government reassures farmers that they will expedite the release of the aid. Adrian. Live from NFA Region 6. Thanks, Daryl. Mining and treasure hunting activities were reported at the Hundred Islands National Park. Joan Ponsoy tells more in this report. The local environment authorities ordered the temporary closure of Cuenco Island at the Hundred Islands National Park in Alamino City, Pangasinan. After conducting a regular surveillance, it was discovered that there were alleged illegal mining activities and treasure hunting on the island. Pero silang napansin na parang bagong istruktura dun sa Cuenco Island. Kaya pinasok nila at yun nga nalaman na meron palang illegal mining at uh, alleged uh, treasure hunting activity doon. There were no individuals in the area during the surveillance. Digging tools, water hose, dust mass, and gallon of crude oil were recovered by the authorities. Two water pumps, water pipes, and generator were also found in the island. Kung may mining activity man na nangyari, surely dapat merong pan o kaya may peak, excellent peak. So, i-assess natin mamaya sa area. Tingnan natin kung Ano pa yung naiwan na equipment doon? Authorities also discovered a hole measuring 5 meters in depth. Ito kasing 100 Island ay isang uh, tinatawag na protected area. 
at lahat po ng mga mining activities yan, treasure hunting or whatever, ipinagbabawal yan ng batas. The other machines used in excavation were already gone except for the water pipes when the authorities returned to the island the next day. The Hanred Islands National Park Administration refused to give an interview on camera but told the team that Cuenco Island is one of the most visited islands in the park. DNR, Local Government Unit and Protected Area Development and Management Board, or PAMB, sets a dialogue for further investigation of the alleged illegal activities. Together with cameraman Ron Alistair Taniedo, I am John Punsoy for GMA Regional TV. Family of a nurse who died in a plane crash mourns for his untimely death. Rain Palino has the details. Tomorrow, Kirk Badiola, a nurse from Bao Camarines Sur, will be laid to rest in his hometown. Badiola was one of the passengers of medical evacuation flight RP Dash C2996 that crashed last September 1st in Pansol, Laguna. Kirk is best known for his call sign rabbit. His untimely death broke the hearts of many, especially his parents. His family says that Kirk never dreamed of being a nurse. But growing up, Kirk became interested in responding to emergency cases, which led him to take up nursing. Kirk resigned from his previous job at San Juan de Dios Hospital in Pasay City because he wants to work in the field. He later became a volunteer and instructor at the Philippine Red Cross in Camarines Sur. Kirk then volunteered in Raja Fire Brigade before becoming an emergency medical technician at StatMed Ambulance Service and finally a nurse at Air Force General Hospital. Being the eldest, his other siblings have always looked up to him. Talimbawa yung mga uh, relative or ganyan, na nagsisik kami ng uh, help sa kanya or advices kung ano yung ano. His parents say that Kirk is a responsible son and kuya. His father also shared that Kirk is very particular with safety. Even though kami nga eh, sasakay kami ng sasakyan namin, pag ano, aalis kami na hindi kami nakasit, galit na galit yan. Kirk's death leaves his family bereft of a loving and responsible son and kuya and a dedicated nurse. Ayan ang sabi ko, Lord, please help me na mapagaan, mapabaryali. Ayan na ang sabi, may time na, may time na. Ang sakit! Ang sakit! <laughs> Together with cameraman Jovel Obiso, I am Rain Palino for GMA Regional TV. Hey everyone, and here's our latest weather update. The southwest monsoon or habagat continues to affect the northern Luzon, which brings cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms, all over Ilocos Region, the Cordillera Administrative Region, the Cagayan Valley, including the provinces of Zambales and Bataan. And meanwhile, the rest of Luzon, including Visayas and down to Mindanao, will continue to experience generally fair weather with only isolated rain showers and thunderstorms, mostly in the afternoon or evening. And for now, we do not have any tropical cyclone within the Philippine area of responsibility. And for a wind and sea condition, Strong winds from the southwest continues to prevail over northern Luzon, including the western section of central Luzon with the rough sea condition. And for the rest of Luzon and down to Visayas, we'll continue to experience moderate wind and sea condition. And meanwhile, light to moderate winds from the southwest to south will continue to prevail all over Mindanao with slight to moderate seas. And for more weather information, visit our Pag-asa website at bagong.pagasa.dost.gov.ph and check out our social media accounts in Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And that's our weather update for today. Reporting from Pag-asa Visayas in Mactan, this is Netherlands Saletrero. Have a great weekend. An eight-year-old girl dies of dengue in San Quintin, Pangasinan. The victim, Jasmir Oblero, experienced temperature fluctuations caused by the virus when her family decided to bring her to the hospital. However, Jasmir showed complications, putting her into fatal distress. Dahil yung dengue na yan, killer, she killed my princess. Meanwhile, a dengue fatality was also recorded in Villasis, Pangasinan. 
26-year-old Gladys Obaldo exhibited symptoms of the disease when she was brought to the hospital, but unfortunately passed away. Parang flu symptoms lang, tapos ano na, may ano na, complication na bleeding, like nose bleeding, gums bleeding. In Region 6, dengue cases continue to drop. From 1,636 registered cases in August 12 to 17 to 1,540 new cases from August 19 to 24, 2019. Iloilo Province still leads in the entire region with 67 deaths, while Negros Occidental is second with 42 casualties. More than 100 dogs in the Gupan City died of canine distemper. CJ Torida tells more in this report. The dog in this amateur video is experiencing the symptoms of an animal disease called canine distemper. The Dagupan City Veterinary Office is on alert for this animal disease that attacks the respiratory, gastrointestinal, and central nervous system of dogs. Wala po kaming exact data sir, pero sa nakakala po namin ng mga reports, almost, uh, siguro, more or less 100 plus na din po siguro yung mga namatay dahil po dyan sa sakit na yan. Barangay Bunawan Binlok and Barangay 4 has the record for the highest number of dogs suffering from canine distemper. Mang Marcos had his pet dog check at the veterinary office. Hindi nagkakakain. Iba kakako, yung, yung nagka, anong, nagkaroon nito, napakain ko ng bagong luto. City Veterinary Office is running out of vaccines for anti-canine distemper. Aside from canine distemper, Authorities is also monitoring cases of respiratory infection of dogs this rainy season. Grabe po yung lumalabas na sipon, yung muta po nila talagang naiipon po na tumitigas na po. Tapos yun nga po, sa late stages na po, nagpapakita na siya ng, uh, ng neurological signs. Together with cameraman Henry Dominsil, I am CJ Torida for GMA Regional TV. The town of Cordova in Cebu is not only known for its deliciously cooked bakasi or tiger reef eel, because the town is also rich in mangroves or bakao. At the back of the mangrove area lies paradise. Let's enjoy this scenic view in Nico Sereno's report. In the outskirts of Barangay Buagsong, Cordova, Cebu, you only need to pay 25 pesos to ride a banca that will bring you to the hidden paradise. On your way there, you will pass through a forest of mangroves, some mature and some newly sprung. You will also be welcomed by migratory birds that live in the area because of abundant food. After the 15-minute boat trip, you will reach what they call Little Paradise. This is a five-story cottage in the middle of the sea, made of wood and tied together with string. A 20 peso entrance fee lets you swim in deep, crystal clear waters play beach volleyball, surf, relax, and view nearby Cebu City. At the cottage, visitors can also grill fresh fish or cook freshly caught crabs. Pag first mong saka, marig adventurous ka yun na dating. So mga libre po ang services sa mga tao diri. Uguban, uban pa pag first na mo di ha, entrance pa lang. Nice to get If you climb the highest part of the cottage, you will enjoy the 360-degree view of the sea below. Once in the hidden paradise, you will not feel the heat because of the fresh, cool sea breeze. This place was once a standby area for families of fisherfolk. But since many have discovered the resting area, owners of the property decided to open this to the public. Together with cameraman Renante Quinones, I am Nico Sereno for GMA Regional TV. An exhibit in Manawag, Pangasinan features images of Little Mary. John Ponsoy for the details. Various images of Maria Bambina or Little Mary are currently displayed in an exhibit at the Maseo de Nuestra Señora de Manawag. There is the Dormida Maria or Sleeping Maria and Maria Bambina or Little Mary dressed in adorable clothes. The Little Mary exhibit originated in Italy from which the word Bambina is derived from. Parating ulit ang pagugunitan natin ng birthday ni Mama Mary ngayong September 8, si Jesus Christ, uh, pinanganak ni Maria. So kung wala si Maria, 
wala po tayong Jesus Christ na nag-save sa atin. One of the tallest displays is the 42-inch image of Little Mary. A devotee from Bulacan donated the image to the minor basilica. While the smallest is the La Nina Dormida, which is just 8 inches. La Nina is Spanish for little girl. The La Nina Maria Reliquary bust, a foot high, is also displayed in the Museo. The latest addition of the collection is the Maria Bambina made of wax, a replica of original Maria Bambina image in Italy. Kasi lahat naman tayo dumaan sa pagkabata and so Mama Mary din po. The exhibit will last until September 15. Museo de Nuestra Señora de Manawag is open to the public from 8 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Together with cameraman Ron Alistair Taniedo, I am John Punsoy for GMA Regional TV. Now this is my personal favorite. Kapuso, are you craving for a seafood fiesta? This afternoon, John Sala will take us on a food trip to the seafood capital of the Philippines, Roja City. Let's dig into a variety of seafood fresh from the sea to the table in John Sala's report. While traveling around the country's 7,107 islands, there is one place where one can enjoy a variety of fresh crabs, lobsters, shrimps, fish, clams, and seaweeds in the seafood capital of the Philippines, Roja City. The abundance of marine life in Capiz provides a bountiful harvest for Roja City, supplying markets in Luzon and Mindanao, as well as other countries such as Taiwan, Japan, and the United States. Fresh from the sea to the dining table, Roja City offers endless choices of mouth-watering seafood dishes that will surely leave your appetite craving for more. Why don't you add Roja City to your bucket list? Together with cameraman Siri Lorenduque, John Sala for GMA Regional TV. Wow, Kate Zen, what a great way to conclude our afternoon program. You know what? When I see food, I die without any second thought. After all, this is a great way to highlight the best of the Philippines as part of our commitment to each and every kapuso across the country. Zen? Adrian, Kate, seafood is really good because it contains a high-quality protein. But, but for those people who have seafood <laughs> allergy, they have to eat in moderation, like yes. me. <laughs> and what's exciting about that, Adrian and Zen, because Roja City is just here in Western Visayas. That means it will be easier for you guys to treat me. That was the biggest and the latest news from the regions. Thank you for joining us from around the Philippines as well as our Kapuso abroad. This has been Jimmy Regional TV Weekend News, where local news matters. Happy, Happy weekend, weekend, mga Kapuso! kapuso.